ok. We will start from where we have ended. We just told you that uh, how to do the coupling reaction and they are what is the coupling reagent? The coupling reagent is DCC. However, DCC has some limitations. One of them is racemization and the racemization now this slide that is projected you can see the mechanism that uh, whatever I said to you that first it is the carboxylic acid of the amine protected amino acid that attacks the, the carbon the electrophilic carbon and this becomes NH. So, see NH. Now, what happens here? Now, the next is the um, next step is basically if you if you do not have other than any other any other thing uh, only DCC then uh, the amine comes and attacks here and DCU is is released ok. But if you have the hydroxy uh, bench triazole you see after the formation of the intermediate this one this was shown actually with iso uh, isopropyl dicyclic uh, isopropyl diisopropyl carbodiamide because there are isopropyl groups this mechanism ok. So, now the air hydroxy that uh, bench triazole that comes kicks this out this comes out as the urea and in the form it for you form another new intermediate, but this is also very labile immediately the amine comes and attacks this carbon and in the form you get again the hydroxy bench triazole. So, that was what I show uh, I, uh, I, uh, I wrote in the in the board that time ok. Now, let us um, there are other uh, other groups sometimes DCC also fails as a coupling reagent. There are some new protecting groups which are there sometimes a little amount of uh, DMAP also helps because the reaction is between the first reaction is between the carboxylic acid and the carbodiamide. But if you can make a carboxylate that will be a better nucleophile than a carboxylic acid. So, a catalytic amount of DMAP uh, if you add that speeds up the reaction by forming the carboxylate ok. And then uh, this is DCC I showed this is uh, the mechanism of this, but there are other modern reagents uh, which are which are not based on carbodiamides. These are based on only the hydroxy bench triazole framework as you see in all these regions the similar sort of hydroxy bench triazole system is present ok. This is a reagent which is called pi bop because there are uh, this uh, pyrrolidine rings are there three pyrrolidine rings and a phosphorus. These are phosphorus based coupling agents and this is uh, which is called uranium salt based coupling agent. This is called HBTU and this is called HATU ok. Sometimes they are actually much more uh, efficient than DCC where coupling fails with DCC sometimes that happens because DCC is quite sterically bulky and in that cases this type of HATU or HBTU or pi bop you have to use because there are another there are many factors to look at the coupling agent. It is not necessarily always between amino acid sometimes an aromatic amine you have to couple with an acid then uh, you might have to use this HBTU or HATU ok. The, the mechanism of one of these is shown here. This is the HA, uh, this is the HATU. So, uh, I think this is the uh, sorry, just let us see. This is the HATU where there is a pyridine ring also. So, instead of benzene, you have a pyridine, ok. If it is benzene, then it is HBTU. If it is pyridine, then it is HATU. Here, the mechanism is that this is a guanidinium type of system and this nitrogen is a good is a good uh, living group because of the pull from the other n double bond n. So, the carboxylate anion or the carboxylic acid it attacks this carbon first that goes here then it comes back then basically what is happening that this comes attacks at this carbon the electrophilic carbon and resulting in this carbon nitrogen bond breakage. And why this will be facile because there is a n double bond n here which is having a plus charge because it is an n oxide to start with again I can go back 
to the earlier. See, it was starting; it is an N oxide, so slightly different than the N hydroxy uh, benzene triazole. So now this nitrogen is a much better living group. So once that happens, so now you get a benzene hydroxy triazole where the hydroxy is actually in the oxide form. It's not in the wedge form; it's in the oxide form because the nitrogen is now neutral, and this this group uh, is attached to the carboxy now this amidine group. So, it is very similar to the carbodiamide chemistry now, it, this type of intermediate was there in the carbodiamide chemistry. So, now this in hydroxy bench triazole where uh, in this case pyridine triazole not bench triazole that O minus now comes and attacks the carbonyl and this goes out. Okay. This is uh, very similar to the earlier one the latter part uh, and the bench then the hydroxy triazole becomes a living group and then the amine comes and attacks this carbonyl this goes out. So, it is basically you see there are a lot of things here to, to notice one is the, the ultimate mechanism that means the hydroxy bench triazole what we were using to suppress racemization now that is uh, again formed here, but via another new type of reagent which is this N oxide and coupled with the uranium salt. These are called uranium salts and uh, the mechanism uh, is shown here. So, you can uh, write it down or these slides will be made available. So, you can see it if you have any problem, but the byproduct is again you see it is a urea, but this is uh, a, diff a urea with a substitution. Okay. So, these are very good uh, reagents only problem is these are extremely expensive this HBTU or H, uh, HATU. Okay. Now, um, let us do one problem see we go beyond dipeptide suppose I want to make alanine, valine and suppose glycine. Okay. So, in this case what we will do we will first make the alanine and the NH will have a protection and suppose we take a protecting group which is again T butyl okay, T boc and this carboxy is free and from this side valine we protect with we, we, we have free amine because we have to couple this CO 2 H with NH 2 and the valine side, side chain is this and the carboxy has to be protected here you have to pause a little and then think what type of protecting group I should use. Remember here I have to do two peptide couplings one is between alanine and valine and another is between this valine and glycine. So, at this stage when I make dipeptide protected I should not deep protect I should not use a protecting group where both the protecting groups uh, come off that we should not do we should use a protecting group which can be deprotected without disturbing the Bock group of the alanine. So, best is use a benzyl protecting group. Okay. So, if you use benzyl protecting group then you have methyl that alanine. So, alanine as the T Bock and then here you have CO, you have NH and then you have CO benzyl. So, now you have the di protected dipeptide. So, this is the protected dipeptide. Now, these two groups are basically mutually orthogonal to each other. In this case what you need is to deprotect this one because the next coupling is should be between this carboxy of the dipeptide with the free amine of the glycine. So, we should deprotect it by using hydrogen palladium charcoal and that will I am just writing only alanine here just for want to save time. So, that will be alanine Bock and this will be CO NH and then you have valine and the valine will come off as the carboxy. So, then what I do here suppose I use DCC HO BT and now I should use glycine the glycine carboxy now should be protected 
and the amine should be free. The carboxy I should protect in such a way now because that is the end of the formation of the tripeptide we will have protected. So, the protecting group here should be similar to the protecting group similar means they should come off under the same condition. So, glycine should be protected as T butyl ester. So, I take glycine as the T butyl and this is NH2 and then I use DCC HO BT and then what I will get is alanine with NH T box, then I get valine and I get glycine with COO T butyl and now with one shot with TFA I can get alanine, valine and glycine. Okay. The final purification it is it's more or less pure if you do very carefully, but final purification of these peptides are usually done by uh, high performance liquid chromatography or ion exchange column. Uh, we will actually discuss the purification of the peptides and proteins in our next session. So, right now what we have learned that if I want to make a tripeptide, then the protecting groups need to be selected in such a way that the first two should have orthogonal protecting groups. So, that I can take one of keeping the other intact and the second one in this case glycine that should have a protecting group which will undergo similar kind of deep protection, uh, deep protection conditions which need similar kind of deep protection conditions as the free at the amine group at the end terminus. Okay. If you have tetrapeptide, so you, you can slowly build in your um, peptides, but uh, if you have a tetrapeptide, you have see more choices because it can be one after another or it could be that you make blocks and then add the blocks together. Suppose I have I have to make this peptide. Okay. Always remember that on this side, if nothing is written, this should be the amine and this should be the carboxy. Okay. Now, in this case, um, you can do what you can first form alanine valine dipeptide, alanine should be protected, and then you should couple that with glycine, that is one possibility, and then couple the glycine with leucine and leucine should have a protection which is similar to the amine protection here. That is one possibility or what you can do, you can do it in blocks alanine valine and then this is protected and you have glycine leucine and this is protected and then these two are this is carboxy and this is NH2. So, now this you couple and then you deprotect. So, first coupling and then deprotection. Okay. So, rather than deprotection, okay. rather than adding one after another, you can actually do it in blocks. If you have hexapeptide, you can make two tripeptides and then join the two tripeptides together. Okay. Now, this all these reactions that we have discussed are done in solution. Because the first remember the last time I said that amino acids are not soluble in organic solvents, but these reagents uh, the or the uh, these reagents uh, uh, what we are saying are all soluble in organic solvents. Actually water should be avoided in this coupling reactions and everything. So, this is what is called a solution phase peptide synthesis that where organic where this organic solvents are used as the uh, organic uh, reagents are you organic not reagents organic uh, solvents are used okay, to have a homogeneous mixture. You cannot use water you have to avoid water in all these reactions because water is a competing nucleophile in all in these reactions. Remember that water is a competing nucleophile. So, this is solution phase peptide synthesis that what we have peptide synthesis. Later on a scientist named Robert Bruce Merrifield 
Robert Bruce Merrifield, he actually developed a method which is called solid phase peptide synthesis. That is that should be here, yeah, Merrifield. So, Merrifield he developed a solid phase peptide synthesis and today this is the if you want to make a, a larger peptide then solution phase does not work then only solid phase uh, synthesis Merrifield's method of solid phase method is used. Now, what is this solid phase method? What Merrifield did say he took a polymer bead a polymer bead which is insoluble in water and on, on this bead he had a functionality he developed a functionality and utilized this functionality to attach amino acid. But even if you attach amino acid the whole thing is still remain that still remains insoluble okay, in organic solvent or in water whatever you use. Okay. But as I said water is a competing nucleophile so one should avoid water. So, you do the reaction in uh, on a resin on a resin bead add your reagent suppose I want to uh, uh, suppose I want to protect the amine and this amine belongs to an amino acid where it is already hooked up to a resin bead. Now, you add the reagent in a solvent the bead will not be soluble in the solvent, but the reagent will ultimately react because this bead has a functionalized system. So, the reagent will react on the on the bead whatever functionality is present in the bead and after the reaction how to purify you just filter if you filter you isolate the bead and the bead had your already whatever reaction you have carried on the bead and the other reagents are all washed out of the bead. Okay. So, basically purification is extremely easy virtually there is no purification because it is already tied to a bead bead like a marble small marble balls and there are functionality present there. So, you add one amino acid that goes in then you add the next amino acid that goes in, but everything is attached to the marble. So, after every reaction you just uh, wash out the marbles. Okay wash out the beads and your desired peptide will be on the bead. The so, final stage you have to take out the peptide from the bead and then you remove the bead what you are left out is only the peptide that is the method. So, Merrifield's method is like this there is a resin which is called polystyrene. Polystyrene is derived from styrene you know styrene is actually vinyl benzene. Okay and polystyrene is various pendant phenyl groups and the backbone is a saturated carbon network. So, all these are derived from vinyl benzene that means styrene, okay. but while making styrene you add what is called divinyl styrene that means you take vinyl styrene and a little bit of this divinyl divinyl benzene. Okay. Now, what it does this has got only one functional group and this has got two two points where polymerization can take place. So, what will happen that suppose this benzene ring comes from the divinyl system. So, it will also again have another chain of another chain of this aromatic rings. Okay. So, uh, this is okay. So, basically right like this. So, earlier was divinyl is actually a cross linking agent. So, that means there are some cross linkings that happens if one of these happens to come from the divinyl benzene. So, basically some basically what you have pendant aromatic rings, but they are also cross linked and he used this this vinyl this polystyrene 
resins, these are available in beads and then he did a reaction which is called chloroformylation, chloro sorry C H chloroformylation that is done by formaldehyde and HCl, formaldehyde HCl and L, another Lewis acid you generally use, it could be aluminum chloride or it could be anhydrous zinc chloride. So, there are many Lewis acids that you can use and what is the ultimate effect that if you have all these phenyl groups, some of these phenyl rings will have undergo will undergo chloromethylation because HCH to HCl means actually you are generating CH 2 Cl plus. and that is basically an electrophile. So, this is just an elect uh, a friedel craft reaction, but that is chloroformylation. Okay. So, many of these aromatic rings will have this chloroformylated. So, they are nothing but benzyl chlorides. Okay. So, a polymer bead with lot of CH 2 Cl groups. So, this is what is called Merrifield resin, this chloroformylated polystyrene beads are called chlor are Mayfield resin and how much extent of chloroformylation has taken place that will ensure that how many molecules of peptide peptide you can attach to the this chloroformylation hands. So, basically what I am saying that if a bead has lot of chloroformylation hands then basically one from one bead you can make three molecules of three molecules of the peptide. If there are more number of hands then you get from each bead you get more number of peptide bonds. So, the extent of chloromethylation will tell you that how much what will be the efficiency of your process okay. and you can get lot of Merrifield resin in different extent of chloro, uh, chloromethylation content. Okay. Now, then what next? So, these beads we just write it like this, these are the beads of we are just considering one chloromethylation. It is first reacted with an amino acid which is the nitrogen is protected as F mock, here we use F mock and the reason for that and with a base an organic base they will react because this is a very reactive benzylic chloride. We know benzylic chlorides are susceptible to nucleophilic uh, displacement, carboxylic acid is there. So, what you get is the carboxylic acid CH2 and then O, then CO, and then you have this NHF mock. Now, the question is why F mock here? Why not mock? Because now, if you deprotect it, as I said, that the deprotected form is methylene methylene fluorine which is a very fluorescent material. So, seeing the fluorescence and the extent of fluorescence and you can calculate how much F mock group has been deprotected you can be sure that yes uh, the bead is now free from F mock group because the next step is your aqueous piperidine. So, if you do aqueous piperidine then what will happen? this will remain there, this is your amino acid now that will be free. So, as I said the reaction is very easy to work because you take this resin which is insoluble in water add the F mock amino acid a base is like trithalamine and then do this reaction star for some time and then take the bead out that means you remove the, the now it is the other way around remove the solution phase and take the solid phase you give a couple of washings, washing will take care of any of the adherent solvent uh, adherent solvent molecules or reagents. So, you get this now I mean now this is the glycine okay. and then what you have I mean suppose I want to make the same one see alanine, valine, glycine only difference is that in this is very important of course, that in case of Merrifield system if you want to use solid phase you start from the C terminal side 
you do not start from the n terminus side, because it is the c terminus that is first attached. So, you have to first attach glycine. So, I attach glycine. Now, what I will do? I will here DCC usually does not do any problem, because it is a solid phase method. So, DCC and then of course, HOBT you can add and then you have the other. Now, what you should do valine and then that should be carboxylic acid and this should be again F mock. So, now what you will get is this bead attached to C H 2 then then O then C O then your glycine I am just writing glycine then you have valine that amide bond is formed and valine is attached with F mock. Okay. So, now F mock will be deprotected again by piperidine that same thing piperidine means this one N H and you get the bead coupled with O then C O there is a C H 2 not O C H 2 O and then C H 2 O sorry O because this has to be a benzylic oxygen C H 2 O C O and then you have glycine that is attached to valine F mock is now um, F mock will be gone now again that you can monitor by fluorescence okay. and then now valine has free the valine has your free uh, sorry CO 2 H the valine has CO 2 H remember we have started from the carboxy end. So, valine has free CO 2 H now what you give you can write your alanine alanine amine should be there remember again I repeat the same thing that it is just the opposite we started from the right side from the carboxy end. So, the amine should be free here and uh, valine this is N H 2 that is where something went wrong. Okay. The valine has the N H 2 because we have deprotected the N H 2. So, now we should have alanine and that should be the carboxylic acid should be free and the N H should be protected now. Okay. So, we will get the tripeptide at this point I took a pause I did not put any protecting group here. So, what sort of protecting group I should use here if I use F mock again, but after that there is no further peptide extension. So, then for the F mock deep protection I have to use piperidine and for the deep protection from the from the bead I have to use another method. So, the last amino acid that has to be incorporated in fact, that is the first n terminus amino acid. So, that should be protected uh, with a group which is similar to the deep protecting agent for the for the resin deep protection. So, you take the T box. So, if you take T box then this is the resin then you have C H 2 then O then C O and then you have first you have glycine then you have valine, then you have alanine and then you have in each walk. Okay. Now, the whole thing you add H F and you get the tripeptide. So, this is the this is what is the Nobel prize winning work of Robert, Robert Bruce Murrayfield. He incidentally received the Nobel prize in 1984 just single recipient of the Nobel prize for that year. Okay. So, remember that it starts from the carboxy end and then slowly use F mock till you come to the first amino acid which has to be protected with bock and then the last deep protection is with H F anhydrous H F. Okay. Thank you.